Hi, this is Tim from Time to Sew, and I'm here with another short video on using aluminium in your crafting. It's great for card making, scrapbooking, all sorts of things. A really nice technique. Off we go. So the first thing I need is a piece of perspex. This is going to be my work surface. It's nice and flat, and obviously it's see-through. So first of all, I make sure it's nice and smooth, there's no little bits of grit. Uh, this is my aluminium. Now this particular roll is aluminium with a thin layer of copper on the front. So I just use normal scissors to chop off my square. And then I'm going to use um, this tool, which is a paper stump. It's just a really tight roll of paper. Uh, don't be tempted to stir your tea with it or it miraculously turns back into a sheet of paper. The nice thing about it is it's softer than the metal so you can rub away on the metal to flatten it without scratching it. So there we go that's my square nice and flat. Now the first technique I'm going to show you is using normal um, metal embossing stencils. So this is the sort of thing you'd normally use with card and as working um, a stencil with card, I'm going to attach it with a piece of sellotape to my piece of perspex. And you'll be amazed the amount of detail that you can pick up with the aluminium. So you don't want to put too thick a tape on or put any more than you need to. So I'm just touching it over the edge rather than being too heavy handed with it. And then I'm going to take my metal over the top. Don't ever be tempted to skip this stage. There's nothing more frustrating than getting halfway through and the stencil moving or the metal moving. Then I'm going to use my paper stump to rub across the metal. And as you see, as I rub across, the design comes out. You can also see that I've sped the film up to save you getting bored. Once I can see the shape, I then use the tip of the tool to bring out the detail. The secret with the aluminium is to always work progressively. So you use the bluntest tools first. So here I am just going round, bringing out all of the detail that I can see within this stencil. Just putting in the edge as well. Now that's pretty much all I can do with um, the paper stump tool. And so I'm going to swap to this tool. This has got a nylon tip and a ball shaped end. So this is a much larger version so you can see the shape. And I'm going to run that round pointing into each of the edges. Now the tip of this is very similar to uh, the tip shape of a traditional cardboard stenciling tool, although that would be made of metal. Um, you would think that you could use a metal tool in the same way, but it doesn't slide across the aluminium as the nylon does. It tends to jump and uh, feel really scratchy, almost as if there's grit underneath the tip. The nylon tools are much easier to use. So now I'm going round again, but this time with a pointed tool to pick up even more detail. Now that's given me a really nice edge detail. I'm now going over to this tool, which looks very similar in the picture, but actually has a flat base to it. And I'm just flattening the bottom of each of these shapes. You'll find that the um, aluminium is far more forgiving than card. When you're doing normal embossing on, with card, if you slip and the tool slides across the card, once the card's compressed, you've had it. But with the aluminium, it doesn't matter if you if you slip or um, 
make a mistake because you can just flatten the material out and start again. Just a little bit here that I've missed, so I'm going back over that. There we go. Unlike some other crafts, you know, where you're working with you're working with glitter and that sort of thing, it can make a real mess. This is nice and clean and you can do it in the front room. I'm now just going over with the paper stump to flatten any little ridges that have appeared. And again with the nylon tip tool. Now the reason for working on the perspex is that every now and again you can lift the perspex up and have a look at it from the base and see if there's anywhere that you've missed. On a geometric design like this, um, it's not too bad, but sometimes there can be whole elements of the design that you've left off. And obviously there's not a right or a wrong way of doing this. Uh, for some cards you might not want this level of definition. In which case, you know, stop earlier, just use the paper stump. It can also be quite nice to have a graduated effect by putting uh, a lot of detail one side and less detail on the other. And it has the effect of looking um, weathered, uh, rather like uh, where you see stone carving that's been exposed to the elements and part of it has worn down. I'm just going round, flattening round the uh, the surround here. I could actually have just used the paper stump to do this, but I like the nylon tip tools. Um, there we go. And here we are. This is a finished piece with a piece of card round. Now this is embossed as in the design is going out and this is debossed with it coming forward and you can see the difference between um, the straight aluminium side of the, of the metal and this side with the copper coating and here we are in close up aluminium and copper. Now the next thing I'm going to do is use this little wire brush and all I'm doing is just going over, brushing across the top of the metal. Now, because the it's a thin layer of copper over aluminium, what I'm doing is actually scratching through the copper to the aluminium below, which will give me a nice sort of depth of colour and visually just increases the uh, the look of um, the emboss. Now this is the same thing, I'm just doing exactly the same thing but on the aluminium. Yeah. Now what I'm using here is a mould made by 10 Second Studio. These are the people that make all of the tools I'm using. And it gives far more relief than a stencil does. The stencil only has the relief of the thickness of the metal. The pattern on this block is probably three times the depth. So again, I've attached it with sellotape and I'm just going across with my paper stump to print out the design. And so film's been sped up, again, to save you getting bored, but you can see it's still a, not a long process. I'm just going round, finding the edges, and working progressively. So there we go, there's the, my, just the outline of the design. I'm now using the tip of the tool, as I did with the metal stencil, and just flicking through highlighting each piece in the design.
and as with the previous piece of work, you can stop at any point. So this might be as much definition as you want. Sometimes I find I could be working away at a piece like this, assuming I'm going to work from this side, and then when I take it off, decide that I prefer the other side. So that's about as much detail as I can get with the paper stump. So I'm going to swap now to one of the nylon tip tools. I'm going to use the nylon tip tool with the rounded end first off, and I'm just going to go into each of these little pieces of detail in the design and give it a little bit more definition. Now if you're anything like me, you find yourself wandering around the house and looking at things and thinking that's a nice texture, I wonder if I could use that as a mould. Anything I find, the rule of thumb that I use now is that if it's firm enough that I can push it with my fingernail without my nail going into it, that's solid enough to use as a mould. So I've done designs using the uh, texture on the frosted glass of the bathroom window. I've used stone, I, uh, previously carved stone, I've used uh, cast iron. Just keep your eye out while you're wandering around. Um, I found a lovely old oak gatepost where the, uh, the elements had worn back the soft wood between the grain and left the grain of the wood exposed. And that made a really nice um, design. It's rather, as you can see, it's rather like brass rubbing. I'm now using a pointed tool to get that last little bit of detail in each of these elements. Obviously, the more intricate the design, the longer it will take. But it is one of those crafts that you look at the finished item and the assumption, or certainly on my part, the assumption is that it took a lot longer to do than uh, it has actually taken. Now with this video, I'm only using moulds, but you can use the metal freehand. So next month I'll put up another video and this time we'll be using the same gauge of metal. Some of the tools will be the same, but instead of having a mould to work to, I'll be working freehand. And you can see the difference. So this is this piece virtually finished now, so I'm going to peel it away the sellotape, take the metal away, And here we go, here's our finished piece. Um, and we have the aluminium side with the design going in and the copper side with the design coming forward. Now I'm just gonna chop round here with a pair of scissors to have the piece ready to mount on my card. There we go. So it's rather like cutting um, tin foil with your scissors. Rather than blunt them, it tends to sharpen them. When you're handling the metal like this, you can put little wrinkles and bits in it. So now I've cut it, I'm just going to go around and smooth the edge off. A bit I've missed there, just tidy that up a bit. And here we go, here's the finished piece. Here's the Zooming in to show you the detail. This is the copper side where I've just gone over it with a wire brush. And here are some other designs that in good Blue Peter tradition I did earlier.
And next comes a picture frame with a little picture of Hamish. The metal was worked in the same way and then just applied to a cheap frame. Well, thank you very much for watching. As always, all the equipment shown is available on our website, www.timetosew.com. Thank you for watching.